So it's actually been quite a while since I last made one of these. How much did I make from my poultry farm over the last three months? Now just so you understand, the last three months are December 2022, then Jan and Feb 2023. Considering this is March 2023. We really need to know, is poultry farming profitable? Or am I trying to sell you guys something that actually doesn't work? And I'm all disillusioned. Now first, we'll need to understand the basics of the project. What am I talking about? Now I do have a layer farm. In some people's context it's small, in some people's context it's big. For me that's 2,000 birds capacity. These are birds that I transferred to the farm last year in about Feb. They had been brooded, they had actually grown, they should have been maybe 10 or 11 weeks. And so considering these are layers and they start laying by week 18, they still had a few more weeks to start laying. So now you can understand that this is a layer poultry farm and what that means is that when the birds do reach point of production which like I've already said 18 weeks they start to lay sometimes they could reach it a little earlier maybe in the 17th week sometimes a little later on it all depends on the feeding and the management and how you raise the birds and these birds will give you an egg every day ideally the production usually picks around the 26th week and it will stay there till the 36th week and then it will slowly start declining over time so for me on this farm like I said I stocked it with 2,000 birds, maybe a little bit more than that. Currently, they're a little bit less than that. And on this farm, I do have two staff uh, that are running the farm. I'm mainly absent for most of the time. I probably spend maybe two or three days a month present on this farm. And it's only possible because I managed to train and raise an efficient team that's able to manage the farm in my absence. Now, that's really complicated. It's very difficult to get such people. But well, at some point, I'll be teaching you guys how to do that. Now, when it comes to running a farm, the main continuous expenses are feed. Feed actually takes up the highest percentage of the expenses. Then you'll have the labor, then you'll have drugs and vaccines, and also you'll have transport because the eggs need to be transported. Um, it depends on the kind of farm you have. Feed needs to be delivered, but well, the transport cost for feed can be put in feed. But the eggs need to be transported to the sales point, but depending on the kind of farm you have, people could be picking the eggs from you. So for you, that could not be an issue. Now, the other expenses are usually what we consider one-time expenses, usually when you're just starting that farm, which includes the land, where the farm is, the structure, the birds themselves. The birds themselves are kind of in between because you don't have birds running over in the next flock. So you have to buy birds for each flock, but when you do, you buy them once. You also have things like the laying boxes. I believe that can be classified in equipment. Now at my farm, the birds currently are at 62 complete weeks, moving into the 63rd week. And currently, they lay between 86 and 87% consistently. Guys, that's impressive. That is impressive. I'm actually going to talk about that in another of my videos. But that's really impressive. To have birds at 62 weeks actually laying at the target, you know, the standard, it's quite easy to have it happen earlier on. 26th week, 36th week, and you're on target. But to actually have it sustained and maintained into the 60-something week, 70th week, 80th week, that's not something very common. And I'm quite impressed, yeah? I'm, I'm really impressed with what we are doing over here. Really impressed with the team that they have actually managed to maintain the production at this point. So currently on the farm, we have 1,918 birds. Now, you'll wonder, we stocked about over 2,000 birds. But yes, occasionally, you'll consistently have a few birds, you know, dying, just like in any population whether it's a human population, an animal population. And these are small, you know, animals. So it's possible that they die, you know, probably due to whatever issues. Yeah, you'll occasionally get up and find one bird dead or two birds dead. So that's expected. It's a normal curve that you'll slowly have the birds reducing. We should expect you to still have 92% of your birds at point of culling. You know, 80, 100 weeks, you should have at least 92% of the birds present. So we don't expect you to have 100% of the birds. No, that's certainly not normal. Okay, let's keep the talking. Let's get to the figures. So I'm going to be giving you guys these figures in US dollars because, like I always say, a lot of the audience is not only Ugandan. Uganda still makes up quite a small percentage of the viewers. So um, to simply make it quite easy for everyone else to understand what I'm talking about, I always use US dollars so that everyone understands the context. You can always convert it to your local currency. Actually, the product we sell is eggs. I hope I've talked about that. We do sell eggs. So in December, the sales for the eggs were 4,727 US dollars. In January, that went up to about $4,862. That's because the price of the eggs, you know, raised up a bit in January. And in Feb, 
the sales even went higher 5354 us dollars now you might wonder why the sales were higher in feb considering feb has only 28 days and january has 31 days well two factors number one the price of eggs again went a bit higher in feb and number two we still had some eggs that spilled over from jan that we actually did sell in feb and that's the advantage of you know being a layer farmer you don't need to sell at the market rate at that point yeah if you think the price is going up or if someone comes and they're offering you a, a lower price you can decide and keep the eggs you know you won't sell them that week because you can sell them next week at a higher price so that's what happened you know the eggs spilled over into feb and so we had higher sales in feb now we shall go to the expenses in december our expenses were three thousand six hundred and eighty nine dollars now the expenses i mean all expenses you know the expenses the running expenses that's the feed the salaries you know the drugs and vaccines transport those kinds of expenses are in there but you need to remember that the feed cost is actually quite high currently and it it accounts for the hugest percentage of the expenses that's about 88 percent of all my expenses actually feed now in jan the expenses were 3311 us dollars and you can notice that it fell down and that's simply because the cost of the feed came down you know the price of maize became cheaper in january and in feb the expenses were 3024 dollars and that's simply because you know feb has less days so there's less days that we actually do need to spend on feed so the net profit in december was 1038 us dollars went up to 1551 in Jan and went up to 2330 in Feb. So you're trying to understand right now, is this ideal? Could it be more? Could it be less? Are you giving us, you know, really high figures that are not unattainable or really low figures that we think we could hit? Now I know that these figures are actually a bit less than ideal. They could be more. That's the net profit. It could be more. How do I know that? Because the price of eggs, well, despite the fact that it went up a bit, it, it's not like obscenely high it's not really really high yeah but the prices of feeds actually quite high they're higher than usual even at the lowest price where i'm saying in jan and in feb the price of maize has been low it's still high for us here in ugandan shillings it's 1100 that we were buying at that time now that's still way higher than what we were buying at previously 600 700 shillings and that's simply because the last few seasons have been really, really terrible at maize. Now, will it ever normalize? Maybe not. Might never get to 600, but maybe it could get to 800. And that would mean that the, the profits, you know, could get higher. Because if people keep planting maize and the harvest turn out to be good going forward, then we are going to have actually good results. So I'm not worried about that. I know that we can actually have higher profits. So even more than 2,300, maybe 2,500, I know it's doable. Now, you could probably be seated down and you're thinking, even if it's 2000 or let's say $1,500 or $2,000, is that enough? Is, not, is that really worth the effort of looking after 2,000 birds? You know, you quit as a doctor. Of course, that's not the only thing I do. Clearly, that's not the only thing I do. But imagine that's all you are looking after, 2,000 birds. And so you have your net profit of 2,000 US dollars. Is it worth it? I feel like it is. Now, I'll give you a, a figure, a, a really interesting figure that I came across on the internet. The average savings balance for an American citizen, I mean, I mean, United States of America, is 4,500 US dollars. And, now this is even more damning, and only 39% of Americans would be able to pay a $1,000 emergency expense. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Now, don't take me in bad faith. I don't have anything against the US. Um, I actually do love the country. Nothing. It's simply because the data is out there. <laughs> you would never get data like that for Uganda. It's interesting. You would never get it. And if you got it, trust me, I wouldn't believe it because I wonder where they get such surveys from. From the US, well, I can trust it a little bit more. So I hope it's actually true. Yeah. But, you know, in, in what would consider a first world country, 1,000 dollars for an emergency so if someone is actually making two thousand dollars from africa or from whatever part of the world you're actually living decently i do believe that you're making two thousand dollars a month and for us over here our expenses are not so high you know i could very easily and well survive on five hundred dollars a month 
properly survive. I wouldn't say survive, actually live and be happy on $500 a month. So if I'm making $1,500 profit, I can, if I can keep $1,500, I'm earning $2,000 and I can keep $1,500 a month, then I should be doing good. So I believe this is good business. And if you expand, for example, right now I'm on our farm over here where we're expanding and we have 2,500 buds. When these ones come into production, the figure is even going to be higher. So I feel like this is really good business if you do it well, yeah? If you do it well, remember, it involves lots of intricacies and you can actually do it well. You can fail, but you can do it well. I hope I've shared the figures with you and you've actually liked them. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell. That way you never miss out on an upload. Lots of love. Bye-bye.